Field maintenance is something you may not think a lot about, but if you're going to head out into the woods with some pretty important and often expensive gear, it's something you ought to give some thought to. You don't have to carry a lot of stuff to keep your gear in shape, but having a basic kit will make it a lot easier on you. Sometimes you need the perfect piece of gear. Sometimes you need to make the perfect kit. And sometimes you just need the perfect cup of coffee. Gear can be confusing, but it doesn't have to be. No BS, no agenda, no sponsors. Just what you need to know. Welcome to the ultimate. Your knife sharp is super important when you're out in the woods and it's something that starts back at home. You want to start with a super sharp knife to make sure that you're ready for any tasks out on the trail. It's really hard with trail specific gear to fix a blade that is really, really damaged. So be careful, take care of it. Before we take a look at sharpening a knife, you're going to want something to keep your kit in. If you want to feel real bushcrafty, you can get one of these leather carriers like this. I made it myself. I'll make sure and leave a link down below if you're interested in making one of these yourself. This is a deer antler and inside I keep all of my maintenance kit including what I use to sharpen my knife. And that's this right here. This is a Fjall Raven DC3 stone. Dimensions are one by three by one quarter inch. It weighs about 1.3 ounces. It costs 17 bucks or so. One side is 800 grit, the other is 14,000 grit. This is really good for touch-up work. And given the size of this, I recommend the kind of a circular motion on your, on your uh, knife instead of long strokes, although you can do it whichever way you want to do it. I've got my Mora Kans bull here. It's pretty sharp already, but you can keep that angle and just either go long strokes or nice short strokes. Helps you keep your edge really well in the field. Pretty nice piece of kit for 17 bucks. Next I have this travel strop. I bought this from LT Wright long ago whenever I bought my first knife from them. And it's got a nice little bungee here, or elastic cord, and it rolls out really simply. You can attach this very simply to a tree. I'll show you guys how to do that in a second. Often at the end of the day, you can just strop your blade and that's all you need to do to keep it sharp. You can hold on to it or put it on a tree like this. You can either just attach this straight to the tree like this, really simple. You get your knife and you just strop it really simply. Very easy to use. You can attach this to almost anything. This is just a tree, but as you can see, it's really simple to use, very convenient. This costs $10, which I think is very reasonable. I've had it for about four or five years and it's really stood the test of time. Next, I have this classic Lansky puck. This is for axes. It has two grits, a 120 grit and a 280. Uh, you really don't need a razor sharp edge on your ax, but this allows you to get uh, with the higher grit 120 and 280, that 120 is pretty coarse and you can get some pretty bad dings out of your axe out in the field. You're more likely to damage your axe just because of the nature of the work you'll be doing with it. If you do happen to mess up your knife pretty good, this also will uh, help you. You can use this on the knife if you really need to work on a damaged part of your edge. I've never had to do it, but I guess if you had to, you could use this for sure. Cost on this seven bucks. Next I have a small container. I actually don't have any oil in it because I forgot it, but I keep olive oil normally inside of this container. It helps protect your steels from moisture, whether it be knives or axe, even firearms. You can hydrate your leather sheaths with it. It's food safe and of course I don't need to explain to you why you want something food safe when you're dealing with uh, your knife. If you're cutting something that you may be eating later, you want to make sure that you don't put any toxins or anything in it. So I did manage to leave the house without filling this with olive oil again, but normally that's what's in it. Last, I recommend some kind of a sewing kit. I bought this sewing kit off Etsy just to support a fellow uh, maker. I think it costs 15 bucks from the UK. It's got pretty large needles, angled needles, and all kinds of stuff in here, including things you would need for more uh, sewing 
uh, from the standpoint of cloth. I'll probably take some of these out and you can interchange these. If you're needing something like more thick cordage for uh, canvas tents or whatever, you could replace and put in and out of this whatever you need. This little pouch here allows you to put the needles in and out and it keeps them nice and handy. You can get on pathfinderschool.com. They have some awesome sailing needles and some thick twine. At the very least, I would recommend something like that. You want to be able to sew your gear back together if there's a problem. This is honestly something that I have to work on from the standpoint of skills. I'm not a good, uh, I'm not good at sewing, so I need to work on that. We all love to collect gear, but we have to remember that we have to take care of it when we're out in the field. I live in Louisiana. It is a naturally damp, wet environment. And if I'm not careful, I will get rust all over most of my steels, even stainless steels at times, if you leave them enough, they will start to get marred up. If I don't protect my gear, it will rust before my eyes and there is nothing more frustrating than having gear that just ruins because you're not taking care of it. Even indoors where I live, rust can set in, so you have to be careful. I recommend developing these three simple habits. First of all, when you leave on a trip, make sure you have sharp and clean gear. While you're out in the field, work on maintaining it the best you can. Keep it lubricated, keep it hydrated. When you get home, fix any damage, clean it up very well, lubricate it, and store it safely someplace it's not gonna get a lot of humidity or moisture. If you do that, you should be able to take care of your gear both on trail and when it's at your house or in your gear barn. This is a pretty straightforward and inexpensive kit. You can take care of your gear easily and I hope you found it worth your while. As you know, this is part of my Ultimate Series, so make sure you check down below and check the playlist for other Ultimate Series videos. This helps you navigate the confusion and find just the gear and ideas that you're looking for. Do me a favor, guys. If you like the video and you like the series, hit the thumbs up down below. It really helps spread things across YouTube. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscription button, and if you want to make sure you receive a notification when I release new videos, hit the little notification bell down there, and you'll be the first to know when I release new videos. I'm out here in Arkansas shooting a bunch of videos, having a great time, loving this little place that I'm staying at. Hope you guys are having a good fall and winter so far. As always, guys, stay tuned for more videos here on Paleo Hiker MD.